Now, I've just been talking to a, a, a couple of fellows who I've not met before today, but they were telling me a, a fairly sentimental story of uh, a family who came over from Ireland for a wedding uh, 23 years ago, I think, I think it is now. And uh, there were six, six children in the family, and uh, one of them was being married, and one of the other sons never went back to Ireland. He was just dropped off in a side street in Abergavenny and told to go and make his way in the world. And Dick Whittington, Fergal O'Brien, come and step up here. <laughs> Pretty much so, yeah, my brother Dave was getting married. I'd uh, already signed up to the racing school in Newmarket. And uh, yeah, it, uh, we had the wedding in Albury Valley and then I went to Newmarket on the Sunday. My uncle Dharma took me there and uh, yeah, so that was it. And from there you went to Tim Foster's, yeah? Yeah, I had three and a half great years at Camp Foster's and uh, that was a real f foundation for me in learning how to do it, sort of right, I suppose, his way anyway, and the way the old school did it. And then I uh, had a year with a private trainer when I rode for a little bit, badly. <laughs> but it, it gave me enough insight to be able to tell these boys how to ride, you know, how, where they're going wrong. I've ridden several winners for my sofa that they should have won on the ride. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, and then I had 18, you know, fantastic years with Nigel. Yeah, we, we, I think everyone in the room's aware of your time with Nigel, and you were such an important cog in a, a very big yard. Make, making the break and, and moving out from being a head lad, going out on your own, setting up as a trainer. Scary or what? No, it's not really that scary because I've got such amazing people like you mentioned earlier. You know, I've got Chris, Jeff Keyes, Timmy, Paddy, you know, I've got all these boys and girls behind me who've just worked incredibly hard to get, you know, what you see up there today wasn't there on Monday and uh, without their work it just wouldn't be there, you know. Coming into this place, uh, how did you tell everyone how it happened between you and, and Timmy. Timmy obviously found the place and then he found you in a sense. Well, sort of, Timmy was riding out for us and then he sort of stopped riding out for us and he was doing this here and I came over and saw one day and he was on about putting a wood chip in. I said, well, you're never going to even train if you're going to have a wood chip. And he said, well, you know, I've put a decent gallop in, you know, get, I said, you get someone, you get someone in to train and, you know, it'd be, it'd be a nice place. And then we just got talking and one thing another, one thing led to another and things that happened at Nigel's and, and I spoke to Chris and I don't know, and it all seemed just to happen. And suddenly I was having a meeting with with Ray and, and uh, it all went from there really. Uh, and putting it all together, there's obviously teething problems, you, uh, delays, you wait for your license, you wait for planning permission, you wait for the builders to finish. Um, you didn't have an awful lot of hair to start with, have you lost a bit more? <laughs> I've had a great honeymoon period, you know, I've been very fortunate that uh, some very good owners gave me lots of money to go and buy some young horses and things like that. And So I've had a great honeymoon period which got me, go, got me through all the sort of the ups and downs and yeah, and the, the licensing took ages. I thought it was a formality. It took took forever. Um, I thought I'd have runners by now. Um, but uh, we could always see the potential here. You know, we could always see what could be here and, and what what is here. And I hope what you saw today, you know, even in the terrible weather conditions that we have, it's, it's a fantastic place to train horses. And people keep telling me there's no excuse and there's no pressure, but there really isn't any excuse. And as long as we get the right horses, and like I say, I've just got the right people around me, so. There isn't really any excuse, no. Well, I've seldom seen such a big queue of top jockeys at a, a new yard, I can say well, that. Well, Are yeah, you I have more to do with Timmy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but you've already got, you've got the boxes full, you've got about 40 horses in already. I mean, it's a terrific start. Tell us what we can expect to see some horses running. Uh, hopefully next Sunday, hopefully we've got Supreme the Pie ready to put uh, on to maybe. If not, you know, in the next couple of weeks anyway, we've got, we've got a few lined up ready to go. and um, We were able to work on the grass gallop about 10 days or two weeks ago and five of them went up there and you know they're all sort of forward and ready to go anyway so fingers crossed yeah just need to sell one or two more now well there are some horses for sale you can all see them uh they're, they're on the, the literature as you leave so everyone must look at that as well well fergal uh we, we all wish you luck i'm sure but uh, enjoy your lunch now and and while you go off i'm going to ask you that the um <laughs>